Thank you. Um, it's a real privilege to be here at, uh, at this symposium. Uh, thank the organizers. It's a really been a wonderful day. A uh, bit of explanation. First of all, I think I'm the only chemist uh, who's speaking today. Um, my background before I was at Sanford Burnham Prebys, I was in biotech and big pharma, worked for several years on metabotropic glutamate receptors. And in 2005, I moved to what was then the Burnham Institute, um, now Sanford Burnham Prebys. So I'm moving from an industrial to a non-profit academic environment, which was a, a big transition. Uh, but after about a year, I thought, well, I'm in academia, maybe I should uh, write a grant. And so I looked around, and there was a NIDA RFA for uh, compounds to treat cocaine addiction. And so then I'm thinking, well, nobody at the Institute is doing this stuff. Is there anybody else out there? So I, uh, through talking to people, <coughs> Jeff Conant Vanderbilt mentioned Athena, who I'd actually heard of. And so I contacted her, and she immediately very interested in the idea of putting a collaborative grant together and um, you know echoing all the things people have said first of all what a fantastic collaborator um, my first academic collaborator and still the best um, but uh, to somebody else's point Athena taught me how to write a grant and she's, she had no problem explaining to me. So it was the first time I'd ever written an, an NIH grant. And we put this together. Uh, Svetlana was involved with that as well. Back in the day when you had to mail them in, I still remember we just got the last FedEx leaving San Diego to meet the deadline. But to cut a long story short, we got it funded, uh, my first grant, and we've um, which started the cal collaboration 2007. It's been fantastically successful. Um, this was on uh, specifically cocaine dependence, um, and we've also we've been very productive over the years. This is just some of the publications coming from our uh, cocaine and nicotine dependence uh, collaboration. And again, to you know, reiterate, Athena is really a you know, a pioneer in this area of metabotropic glutamate receptors and uh, drug and nicotine dependence. So I was actually asked today to talk about something else we've been working on, um, and this is depression. And so I'm going to actually talk a little bit more about the, uh, the background to this and what we've been doing with uh, Athena, Athena and now Andre and co-workers. Uh, so you probably know that uh, uh, major depressive dif disorder is a huge problem across the world. It uh, has a huge cost, both economically and socially. Um, and current antidepressants, many of them work, the many SSRIs work for a lot of patients, but uh, a significant number of the population are resistant to the, the common treatments. And again, this, this really is a big problem. But related to this, uh, the drug ketamine, it's been shown that a single IV injection has a profound on effect on many treatment-resistant uh, patients. And basically, this is just showing a single uh, IV dose has a long-lasting effect. Um, the issue is obviously this is a, uh, has to be uh, administered in, in a hospital setting and chronic dosing is a problem, plus it's a highly addictive drug. So can we find something better than uh, ketamine? Well, um, I'm going to flip over to the next slide. So uh, we've been collaborating with Athena uh, primarily on group 2 metabotropic glutamate receptors, so mglu 2 and mglu 3 We also just started to work on mglu 7 but this story is around uh, primarily mglu 2 um, And again, this is so mglu's are G-protein coupled receptors, uh, and uh, the mglu 2 in particular is found 
presynaptically. So in terms of, you know, why is this connection between NGLU2 and 3 and depression? So a number of orthosteric antagonists, and I'll just provide people with a definition of orthosteri orthosterism versus allosterism, which has been mentioned today, but I'll just clarify that. Uh, orthosteric antagonists uh, show ketamine-like efficacy in some rodent models of depression, including the force swim and tail suspension tests. Um, in addition, there are, uh, it's being shown by Roche and ADEX, that's um, uh, negative allosteric modulators of MGLU2 <coughs> uh, are effective in similar models. Uh, in addition, uh, what one particularly interesting uh, observation was by a local company, Brain Cells, with the drug MGS0039, which was licensed for, uh, by brain cells from Taisho. Um, and this drug is showing here, so for example, uh, it shows an increase in glutamate uh, and, and also serotonin in vivo. And then it also has this effect of in vivo neurogenesis, which is common to uh, some SSRIs. So there's a fair amount of evidence su uh, suggesting that MGLU2 uh, antagonists and negative modulators may be effective for treatment re resistant de depression. So again, orthosteric compounds uh, compete with the endogenous ligand at GPCRs, um, whereas our focus for the last many years has been on allosteric modulators, so compounds which modulate the receptor at a site which is distal from the uh, orthosteric site. Uh, and these include positive allosteric modulators, which again our focus with Athena has been um, drug and nicotine dependence, uh, whereas for this project, the negative allosteric modulators is where we are focused. So some, ex some of the examples, some structures here for orthosteric antagonists, and then also some negative allosteric modulators. And again, we started this uh, project a few years ago, and this has been a really SAR, an, a entirely collaborate collaborative. So my lab synthesizes the compounds, performs the in vitro testing, and then we hand the compounds over to uh, Athena and now Andre's group who run pharmacokinetic studies. They hand us back the uh, samples, we do the analysis, and then compounds go into uh, Andre's force swim test. Um, again, this is just more information about the uh, mechanism. Uh, so again, the idea is that the uh, MGLU2 NAMs inhibit presynaptic MGLU2 receptors, leading to increased uh, a spike in glutamate. Um, in terms of our in vitro assay, uh, there's a couple we use. One is um, either MGLU2 or MGLU3, specifically expressed in uh, HEK cells, which co express G protein coupled in inwardly rectifying potassium channels. We use a, uh, a thallium sensitive dye and uh, for negative allosteric modulators, uh, apply glutamate and then see if they block the effects of glutamate in this readout. So here's some dose response curves from the in vitro uh, assays. And on the left, top and bottom, MGLU2. MGLU2, uh, this is a negative allosteric modulator. Um, for at the top is the GERC assay. We also have a calcium readout. Uh, on the right-hand side, dose response, MGLU3 in, the, MGLU3 in the GERC and the calcium assay. And you'll see this compound here, for example, uh, uh, is non-selective and e hits MGLU2 and MGLU3 equally. Uh, conversely, we have developed some compounds which show quite nice MGLU2 selectivity. So they have activity in both the GERC and the calcium assay but not in the, uh, against MGLU3. 
And so one of the things is that we're interested in doing is un understanding a possible contribution of mglu 3 compa compared with mglu 2 So um, without going into details, we've made more than 500 compounds across three different structural classes. This is just showing some of the in vitro data uh, for many of the compounds. And um, uh, with varying degrees of selectivity, I'm not showing all of the NGLU2 selective compounds here, but many, many of them. Uh, so we have a, r a range of profiles. Some are equipotent against both receptors and others are selective. Uh, we've tested uh, a number of compounds and we're continuing to test compounds for their pharmacokinetic properties. Uh, here's a table of some of the data. Um, on the upper right hand side, we're showing uh, the plasma levels following IP dosing. And then for, t I'm sorry, so for these are, these are all plasma levels for two different compounds, upper and lower. And so we're seeing really very good uh, effects in vivo in terms of just drug levels. And here we're also able to measure brain levels. And take home here is that we have pretty good brain penetration for this first set of compounds. Uh, and so once we go through the synthesis in vitro testing, pharmacokinetics, uh, and brain, uh, plasma and brain levels, then we move into the four swim test. And this is, uh, again, this is unpublished data uh, from, uh, this is from o Andre. Um, and what we're seeing here is that ketamine and the orthosteric antagonist LY341495 and also two of our negative allosteric modulators have a very similar profile uh, in that they um, have an effect on immobility and swimming but not on climbing. Interestingly, the uh, compound decoglorant, which is an mglu 23 nam that was in the clinic with Roche, has a different profile. So it has a similar effect on immobility, but it does not affect uh, swimming, but it does affect climbing. So I'm showing this because we have, a, we have some thoughts on uh, why we think decoglorant would not be a good uh, drug uh, as an antidepressant compared to um, compounds which have a, a, a much closer profile to that of ketamine. And of course, getting to this stage, and again, this is a relatively early stage project, but it's really well positioned to ideally ultimately move a drug into the clinic. None of this would be possible if it wasn't for Athena and her career and her work and her building her lab and her, her um, influence in the entire field. And we're truly grateful uh, to her um, because we have been very successful and will continue to because um, she her legacy goes on. Thank you. Thank you.